Welcome to this edition of Fraser TV. My name is Leah Costello and we're joined today with the former Prime Minister of Australia, John Howard. Elected for four consecutive terms and Australia's second longest serving Prime Minister, he was in office for nearly 12 years. Mr. Howard, so let's talk about uh, President Obama then. Obama mania has swept the United States, it swept Canada, in fact it seems to be sweeping the world. What are your impressions of uh, President Obama to date in terms of um, the messaging that he's sending out to the world? Well he's a very articulate man and he presents very well and, and there is understandable uh, excitement about the historic event that for the first time in her history America has elected a black president and that's, that's great and I, I can understand people's sense of achievement and, 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 and uh, uh, joy of that. Uh, as to his policies, well uh, I'll wait and see. Um, every political leader has to be judged on what he does, uh, not on what he says and President Obama comes to the job with a track record when he was in Congress being left of centre, uh, just how uh, much he will continue in that direction when he's in office, we'll have to wait and see. He comes to the office with enormous goodwill, uh, but um, he comes to the office with um, uh, not a lot of past experience, but he's got a lot of good people around him. I think many of his choices of people, especially in the economic area, have been very good. I'm very pleased that he's being advised by Paul Volcker, uh, who was a wonderful chairman of the Federal Reserve and a great inflation fighter and a very courageous um, uh, economic uh, official. But I have to suspend judgment. Um, I'll have to wait and see. Uh, everybody's got to be judged on, on how they perform. Now he's, he's come to office though under, under the magic of change. Mm. Do you expect that he will um, change a lot in terms of foreign policy? There's, certain a lot of, there's certainly a lot of expectation that the, that the foreign policy of the, of the United States is going to have a dramatic shift. Do you expect that that will happen? I don't think there'll be a dramatic shift and I think we will find after a couple of years that the Obama administration has not changed American foreign policy all that much from the Bush administration, particularly during the last four years of the Bush administration. I think you will find that Obama will confront the same problems with many of the same responses. And people will be surprised in a couple of years' time at the similarities between Obama's approach to foreign policy and that of Bush just as there were many similarities between Bush's approach and Clinton's approach. Now you of course had a very unique relationship with President Bush, uh, not only personally but also as a colleague uh, you know, in foreign office. Australia and yourself personally came to the forefront right away and stepped up in support of the United States after the terror attacks of 9-11 and uh, many would say that that was very beneficial to Australia in terms of the trading relationship that you had. I was wondering if you could uh, elaborate as to how do you think history will judge George Bush on foreign policy and on economic issues? Well I think um, history will judge him on foreign policy a lot better than the commentators have in the last few weeks. Uh, he, he prevented another uh, terrorist attack on the American homeland and that was no small achievement. And everything that was done in the months and years that followed uh, September 2001 and it's got to be seen in the context of protecting America against a further attack because everybody thought there would be a further attack. That's now been forgotten seven or eight years on and in my part of the world in the Asia Pacific region I think uh, Bush's foreign policy was particularly successful. He managed to keep the temperature between Taiwan and China well below boiling point he had a constructive relationship with China without conceding anything ideologically and by reviving and strengthening the relationship with Japan and reaching out to India uh, he provided a very neat counterpoise to China without doing it in a way that was offensive to the Chinese and if you look at the last few years in that part of the world it has been a period of calm stability and Bush deserves a lot more credit for that than he's been given. Now, could you comment on uh, how do you think history can or should judge him then in relation to the Middle East, in relation to Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, I was a supporter of what was done in Iraq and Australian troops 
participated in the operation in March of 2003 uh, and Iraq is now, after some dreadful years, Iraq is now stabilising as a result of the surge uh, for which uh, Bush received virtually no support uh, around the world and not a lot of support in his own country but it has been successful and if it is possible for American troops to be withdrawn in the next year or two in accordance with President Obama's timetable, well it will be as a result of the success of the surge uh, uh, more than uh, anything else. The big problem in the Middle East of course is Israel, uh, Palestine and there will be no solution to that problem while ever the majority of the Ar Arab states refuse to accept Israel's right to exist. There has to be a two-state solution. There has to be an independent, uh, secure Israel recognised by everybody and there has to be a Palestinian homeland. Uh, and you won't get that until the majority of the Arab states accept Israel's right to exist. And the goodwill that you talk about with Obama, is it possible that some of that will translate into more success in that region? Well, I hope so. I mean, I wish him well. Um, I want him to succeed. He's the President of the United States. It's the most powerful position in the world. Uh, he's entitled to what we in Australia say a fair go. Uh, he's new. Uh, people are excited about him and I wish him well, but he's got to be accountable like everybody else. Um, uh, you can't um, govern a country on, on emotion and goodwill. You, you, you need those things and they're very valuable, but you have to take the right decisions. And I think if he takes the right decisions, he'll win support. But he's going to find the realities of office uh, very challenging. And, and some of the rhetoric will not be easily translated into deeds. So America now, of course, is in the throngs of a financial crisis. Um, many have said that the Republicans did not follow their own fiscal responsibility medicine. And uh, how do you think history will judge America and George Bush's leadership on economic policy? Well, my uh, attitude toward running budget deficits is well known. I, I wouldn't have run a budget deficit and in, in that sense. The approach of that administration and my administration was different. Uh, uh, I do think um, that it would have been better if uh, the American budget had been kept uh, closer to balance. Uh, I know they had a war in Afghanistan and, and uh, Iraq to finance, but uh, uh, I do think it's always good to try and keep your books balanced and try and deliver a surplus. So our, our, our differences, if you like, in relation to that are well known. Uh, I think the Long-term question, though, is how quickly America can recover. I predict that although America has entered the recession earlier and more deeply than many other countries, I predict that America will come out of the recession more rapidly because it's such a big unregulated economy. And one of the great strengths of an unregulated economy is that although it can go down quickly, it can come up very quickly. And the countries that are going to find it hardest to get out of the recession are the highly regulated countries that entered the recession with high levels of unemployment, like some of the European countries. Mr. Howard, thank you so much for joining us here today and for sharing your valuable insights with Canadians at a time when we need to hear them the most. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. That's it for this edition of Fraser TV. My name is Leah Costello. Thanks for tuning in.